You are watching Christ's Commission Fellowship. Changing lives for eternity. Repentance means what? Change of your mind. You begin to realize Jesus is not just a savior. Jesus is not your servant to call on him when you have a problem. Jesus is the Lord, the King of Kings, the one who loves you, the one who died for you. And every time you commit sin, you are rebelling against the King of Kings, and it is a serious offense. And that's what she discovered. Jesus, the one who loves me, he died for me. So look, look at my illustration. What's repentance? Once upon a time, I was walking this way, away from God. PTC was running his own life. I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, if whatever I want to do. Then I learned about the gospel. How I was a sinner through the work of the Holy Spirit. God convicted my heart. I knew I was a sinner. I asked myself, what can I do? And then the Lord reminded me, come to Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus. You see, my direction changed. Now, I'm following Jesus. Does it mean I will never sin? No. Does it mean I'll never make a mistake? No. But what's the difference? The direction of my life has changed. I'm now committed to pleasing God. You see, I am no longer what I used to be. I'm not yet what I am supposed to be. I'm on my way to becoming what God wants me to be. When I repented and gave my life to Jesus, He did something in my heart. He changed my desire. Honestly, I don't enjoy the things that I used to enjoy. I'm still tempted. But something happened in my life. And only God can do that. The same thing with Ren. When she gave her life to Jesus, she was delivered from drug addiction, from sex. My friend, apart from the grace of God, apart from the gospel, how can you change? So you must understand the gospel. The gospel is all about God, His love for you. But you need to do something. You need to respond. You don't become a robot. You need to admit. Pierce in the heart. I have sinned against God. Until you admit you are a sinner. Why do you need to turn to Jesus? You know, I'm reminded of the story of Frederick II. He was the king of Prussia. He visited the Berlin jail. And he noticed when he went to the jail, all the prisoners were bothering him. I'm not guilty, I'm not guilty, Your Honor, I'm not guilty. But he saw a man there on the side, alone, dejected. He went to talk to the man. Why are you in jail? Your Honor, armed robbery. And are you guilty? Yes, Honor, Your Honor, I'm guilty. I deserve to be punished. When the king heard it, the king issued a command. He told the soldiers, this man who is guilty, release him from prison. I do not want him contaminating all the innocent people. If you still don't get the story, wake up. It's already afternoon. You see, all of us pretend to be innocent. How can you be given pardon if you don't admit you're a sinner? You see, years ago, I came before the Lord and I told the Lord, I'm guilty. And after I gave my life to Jesus, He did something, a surgical transformation. I am no longer what I used to be. I no longer enjoy what I used to enjoy. I am not yet what I should be, but I am becoming what God wants me to be. And that, my friend, is repentance. You cannot have salvation without repentance. So what is the gospel? The true gospel. Jesus 
died for my sins. And he rose again on the third day to prove that he's the son of God, the Savior. And what does he want me to do? How do I become a Christian? Peter is very clear. The gospel is very clear. Peter said, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Friend, what is baptism? Baptism is the first act of repentance in the New Testament. Why? Because baptism is a picture of dying to your old life in the water and you get out of the water new life in Christ. But baptism is a picture of repentance. You died your old life and now you have new life. See, for us, we don't understand repentance. I'm reminded of the story. Now, whether it is true or not, but it gives the point. It's about the story of a man who lost his wallet. And after a few days, he found the wallet. Somebody wrote him a note inside the wallet. Sir, when I found your wallet, I felt so guilty getting your money. Therefore, I'm returning your wallet and some of your money. If I feel more guilty, I'll return some more money. My friend, is that repentance? No. Lord, adultery is wrong. It's messing up my life. I will just do it once a month. That's crazy. Repentance is, Lord, this is wrong. I don't have the power. I do not know how to live a holy life, but Lord, I'm sick and tired. I am a sinner. I want to change. I repent. My friend, if that is a commitment, I guarantee you one thing. God will pull through. Because he's alive. He's in your heart. The Holy Spirit is in your heart to change you. Amen? You know, this morning, somebody came for prayer. And she told us what happened. During our prayer and fasting, she was so sick and tired of her life. Especially her smoking. Her drinking. She said, Lord, if you are real, I really want to change. And you know what she told us? The next morning when she got up, no more desire. You see, only God can do that. Yes or no? I know some of you are struggling. You are struggling. You know why? You have not understood the gospel. The good news is this. Jesus died and rose again. He's alive. And when you ask him to come into your heart, he will come into your heart and he will change you. That's the Christian life. It is Christ in us. Amen? My friend. Don't be confused with this verse. Repent and each of you be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. It is not saying baptism is equal to forgiveness. That word, ace, that's the Greek word, can be translated as for or it can be translated as because. I suggest you translate it this way. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because of the forgiveness of your sin. That's the proper way. What's my proof? That I, want, I will teach you how to interpret the Bible. You look at other passages regarding the same topic. You make the clear passage describe the passages that a possible interpretation. Here is the clear passage. How do we have forgiveness? Everybody read of him, all the prophets bear witness that through Jesus, everyone who believes in him receives what? Forgiveness. So how are we forgiven? When you believe the gospel, Jesus died on the cross for your sins and he rose again. If you believe he died for you and he rose again, he is God. Forgiveness. But then notice, what about baptism? The same chapter by Peter himself, he now explains, Surely no one can refuse the water for this to be baptized. Who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. Notice, 
you are baptized after the Holy Spirit comes into your heart. And when does the Holy Spirit come into your heart? When you believe. So baptism is always after believing. And that's why in CCF, we do not promote infant baptism. Because infant baptism is totally meaningless. They don't even know. Baptism is an act of obedience. It is the act of saying, Lord, I repent of my sins. I will identify with you. That's why you must understand the meaning of baptism. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized, same word, into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? So when we baptize in CCF, we put you under the water, baptized into his death. And then when you get out of the water, therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. When you get out of the water, what does it mean? New life. No longer I, but Christ. You see, repentance is saying, no longer I, but Christ. My friend, that's the gospel. Wonderful. My friend, some of you remember him, Nelson Reed. Nelson Reed is the father of my daughter-in-law. My son is married to Jenny. Her father is Nelson Reed. Nelson Reed grew up drug addict, bad young man. He worked for a store, but he was stealing the stuff in the store. It's the sporting goods. Then he met Jesus. When he met Jesus, he knew what he did was wrong. Conviction, it's wrong. Repentance changed. He went to the boss. He said, boss, I want you to know something. I've been stealing from you. Here are some of the goods. They're expensive. Leather gloves, you know, for baseball, baseball bat, skiing gears, expensive stuff. The boss said, I forgive you. However, there are consequences. I cannot hire you anymore. You know what Nelson said? Sir, I understand. I will repay every cent I stole from you. It's called restitution, repentance. And my friend Nelson Reed repaid everything he stole from the company. That, my friend, is the meaning of the gospel that brings about genuine repentance. Not salvation without transformation, my friend. That is a joke. So do not deceive yourself, okay? Praise God. Now, who gives you the power to repent? Who gives you the power? The Holy Spirit. And he concluded his message. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. In other words, the gospel is God calling you. It's God calling me. Return to me. Come to me. I died for you. I love you. The gospel is all about Jesus. It's from God. And he calls you. And what must you do? You got to do something. With many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them. Peter kept on speaking. Be saved from this perverse generation. You see, the gospel is all about God's grace. But you need to do something. You need to make a decision. And he tells you how to become a Christian. How do you become a Christian? Believe. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you receive the forgiveness of sins. Guess what happened? How do you become a Christian? You believe. Those who receive his word, you receive. You trust him. And then, baptize. How many were baptized? 3,000. Just imagine. On that day. Now, what did they do? Next week, I will tell you. This evidence of changed lives. But you notice something about the 3,000? The Holy Spirit came into their lives. But no tongue speaking. No wind. No fire. But there was transformation. Just like you today. God will come into your heart. In the quietness of where you are. If you repent. He comes in. 
and He begins to change you. You will see the changes of these 3,000 people next week. Would you like to know? In the meantime,